Hey guys, uh, this is my second video uh, on wood gas stoves, and uh, this is my version 2. Uh, if you've seen my first video, you'll see uh, I attempted to build a uh, wood gas stove using nothing but uh, stainless steel components, mostly uh, stuff from IKEA. Uh, this is the second version. I've made quite a few changes and uh, this is my first time lighting it up so I'm gonna do a boil test like the first video and then I'm gonna do a runtime test and see if there's any significant improvement uh, the main things that I've changed were uh, these air holes here made them quite a bit larger uh, secondary air holes uh, I just had one row of them in this one uh, in the first one I had a, another set uh, down about here I don't think that helped too much and I think it uh, let in uh, too much of the wood gas and the major change that I made uh, to this one uh, I'll show you later but in the bottom of this the primary air holes are quite a bit smaller so what we're looking for is a uh, much leaner mixture of wood gas to air so I want a lot more air than I want wood gas and in the first one uh, we had probably uh, a little bit too much wood gas uh, combined with the air and it wasn't burning as cleanly as it could have so I'm hoping that this one uh, burns a little bit cleaner, uh, maybe produces a bit of a blue flame, as you guys might know. Blue flame is always a very good indication that things are burning nice and cleanly. So I'm just going to put on the lid here. Without burning myself. I'll let that get going for about uh, two or three minutes. Uh, when it's ready you should see some gasification with the flame coming out of those uh, primary, sorry, secondary air holes. And at that point I'll put on one liter of water and we'll do a uh, boil test. Okay, I'll see you guys in a second. You guys, we're back. Uh, I've had this going for a couple of minutes now. Uh, and one thing I've noticed right off the bat, just from my observations of the first burn, uh, this one seems, it does seem to be burning. Uh, a lot cleaner. You see a lot less uh, orange flame. Uh, it doesn't seem as as much of a tall flame as the last one. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or not, um, but it does seem to be burning cleaner. I don't see any smoke really. Um, it's about I think minus three degrees out right now and I'll let it go for another minute or so just to really heat up and make sure that it's gasified properly. It is uh, starting to gasify now and uh, hopefully we have better results than the first test and uh, yeah we'll take it from there I'll see you guys in a bit uh, we're at about five minutes now and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my kettle on the stove and hopefully uh, these larger air holes uh, provide enough air to uh, eliminate the problems that we've seen in the first one where uh, it started to smoke when I put this thing on. So we'll see if that works. If not, uh, then back to the drawing board. Okay, so it is smoking a little bit. Uh, I'll just wait a couple moments to see if that settles. Uh, definitely a lot cleaner than the last time. back a bit so you can see actually it is uh, it is burning fairly cleanly and I, I think that's I'm going to consider that a success so I'm going to stop this reset it and we're gonna have that as a boil test so keep in mind there was about six or seven minutes on there uh, from the time that I lit it and we'll keep that in mind when we do uh, the total runtime test to see how long this burns for <laughs> But uh, one thing I noticed right off the bat, it is a much more controlled burn, uh, slower burn than the first stove that I made. And I guess that is due to the much smaller uh, primary air holes uh, that are on this one. So it's, uh, it seems to be burning slower, more controlled, and a lot leaner in terms of the mix of wood gas to air. Okay, so I will not put you through uh, a 10 minute video of watching water boil. I'll come back 
uh, when this thing's about to boil. Alright, see you in a bit. Uh, we're at about 10 minutes now and uh, still not boiling uh, and I suspect it's going to probably take another 5 minutes or so before it actually starts to boil. But one thing I just wanted to point out is uh, how contained the flame is on this new version of the stove. Uh, you'll notice that there is actually no protruding flame whatsoever and it's burning uh, nice and cleanly and contained within the stove and uh, if you can see there let's see if I can point this out uh, this part here that ring is actually completely open so that's that's a concentrator ring and it's uh, exposed to the flame I had a look underneath and I think it looks fairly clean so far. I'm going to hope that uh, this one's burning a lot cleaner with a little soot as possible. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point out how it's uh, it's nice and self-contained. It's, uh, it's a fairly stealthy burn if you want to call it that. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, things next to it catching fire and it is uh, a nice controlled flame. So we'll come back. Uh, when it is ready to boil and we'll, we'll see where we're at. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, surprisingly, it's at about 25 minutes almost and uh, this thing is just about getting ready to start whistling. Um, not super impressed with uh, how long it actually took to boil one liter of water. As you uh, might recall, at around uh, nine and a half minutes or so, uh, with the first version, I was able to burn, sorry, boil the same amount of water, one liter. Um, it was about minus 15 degrees Celsius that day. Today is about minus three degrees Celsius. So uh, definitely, this is a. Uh, I think it's going to be a much cleaner burn, uh, but I think at the sacrifice of uh, being able to actually produce a lot less heat. Uh, with the first version it seems like it uh, it was more of a roaring fire and uh, it burned, sorry, it boiled a lot faster and uh, this one much much slower. Uh, seems like a lot cleaner but uh, it's probably going to burn a lot longer. I I'd say well over an hour, maybe an hour 30 minutes uh, of actual flame is my estimate. But uh, we're definitely not breaking any records here in terms of boiling water in 26 minutes. Uh, so I think I'm going to make some changes to this one. I'm not super impressed with that. I'll take this out. So you can see, uh, if you recall the first video, uh, we had flame like up to here. And uh, this one is a much slower, more controlled flame. Uh, it does seem to be cleaner. I Oh. Actually, no, it's not. <laughs> and there is a crap load of soot on the bottom of that. So, I'm going to deem this uh, to be a failure <laughs> in terms of uh, producing a uh, cleaner burn. Uh, it is a success in that I learned uh, what works and what doesn't so far in these designs. Um, like I said, I am going to, if you want something, if you're looking for something that's going to burn a really long time, uh, this is probably the formula you want to go with, something with a lot less primary air holes. Uh, but if you want something that's going to provide, you know, usable heat that can cook something in a reasonable amount of time, uh, you want to go with something that looks a little bit more like the commercial designs, like Bush Buddy, uh, and a lot of those uh, backpacker stoves where you have quite a few uh, very large primary air holes. Some of them are, are completely open in the bottom and it's just simply a grate so you, you do have quite a bit of wood gas coming through there and a lot of airflow. Um, so that's that's the main difference here. Uh, if you, the reason why I uh, decided to make this one the way I did with uh, so few and very small primary air holes is because if you look up on uh, YouTube uh, the the magic peanut stove I think it is or a blue flame burner you'll find that there's uh, a couple designs uh, based on on that concept of uh, a lot less wood gas to air and they do uh, seem to have a very gentle burn like this one is uh, exhibiting uh, but they produce a, a very clean blue flame 
I, I don't see a blue flame here, but it is the middle of the day, so, uh, you know, I don't know, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, we'll leave this running now, and uh, it'll be a runtime test now, and see how long this thing goes for. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be significantly longer than the other one. But uh, I do know right off the bat I'm going to make some changes to this. And I do prefer, uh, you know, I guess more primary air and uh, being able to boil a liter of water or cook my food within 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to wait half an hour for a liter of water to boil. That's that's unacceptable to me. Okay, so hopefully, uh, you know, you learned something from this. I know I did. And I'll catch you guys next time. We'll be back uh, when the flame is about to die down and we'll make this a runtime test. Thanks. See you in a bit. Yes, we're back. And uh, as you can see, it's about 47 minutes into... Uh, 47 minutes plus the, the initial six minutes from the beginning that uh, I reset and uh, we still have uh, quite a bit of flame and as you'll notice if you compare if you have actually watched the first video uh, the level of fuel is not really going down and I would say that's most likely because this design is going to produce uh, nothing but wood char so I don't think it's gonna burn it down to complete ash like the first one and it's gonna create uh, it's gonna leave it as uh, you know in its carbon form and it's really just utilizing the, uh, the actual wood gas um, I was debating whether or not I would actually post this video because it did take so long to boil water uh, but you know what, there's a saying that you learn a lot more from your uh, failures than you do from your successes. So I think I'll, I'll post this so you guys uh, can see the difference in, in designs and uh, what to expect from them. And I do want to clarify one thing. When on the videos, I was watching them now. And uh, when I say primary error, I was pointing uh, to this area here. But uh, I'm not actually talking about these holes here. That's not the primary error that I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, the pot underneath the pot uh, the holes if you were to look at it from from down here the holes that are at the bottom there where you normally see the grate that's the primary air and uh, so in this design I used uh, I think it was about 25 holes or so or 15 holes something like that and they were much much smaller maybe a third the size of those secondary air holes and uh, so that's that was the main difference and if you recall in the uh, first video, the primary air holes were actually larger than these secondary air holes, and there was quite a few more of them. Um, so that was the main difference. So I just wanted to clarify, uh, that's that's what I mean when I say primary air. It is the holes on the bottom of the pot where the fuel sits on top of. Uh, this is just simply where the fresh air comes in to uh, provide the secondary air. Uh, so. I suspect this is going to burn maybe even uh, well over an hour and a half, I, I would guess. Um, we'll just let it go and see where we're at. Uh, but I think I'm going to use what I've learned here to maybe make a, uh, a variable uh, design where I can maybe cut a notch in the side of here, stick the bottom of uh, the top of a, a tuna can or something, cut holes in that. and. Uh, put it on a bit of a swivel so that I can open and close and adjust uh, the primary air so you know what the, the type of heat that we're getting out of this right now is actually excellent for simmering your food uh, but when you start it up you, you don't want to wait around half an hour for your stuff to get boiling so you you would probably open it up full throttle and get a, a nice tall flame like we had in the first one and so being able to adjust it would be uh, pretty cool actually so maybe that's what I'll do. Uh, so yeah, we'll let this roll and uh, we'll see where we end up. See you guys in a bit. Back. Uh, so we're coming up on one hour now. Actually, we're, we're past an hour if you add six minutes from the uh, start of the video. And you'll see that the initial fuel level is down to about half and uh, we have still a pretty good uh, strong flame. So this design definitely will run a lot longer than the first design uh, but at the sacrifice of BTU so it's gonna take a lot longer to cook uh, 
but you're going to preserve your fuel a lot longer and uh, you're gonna have a uh, much longer burn so I guess depending on what you're trying to accomplish with this uh, this can be a very good design or it can be a very poor design. Uh, I personally am going to make some changes, but uh, there you have it. Well over an hour of solid flame and we will be back when this has officially died down and uh, we'll see how long it's gone for. Just give me a shot from the top there. Back. It's uh, an hour six minutes plus the initial six minutes that we started with and I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it's about to die down in a wood gas stove so uh, you can see now the flame is actually pulling off of the coals and you'll see it jump to the secondary air uh, that's that's what it looks like when it's about to die down so it's kind of running out of juice uh, gases uh, down there and uh, it, it is about to extinguish very slow, very soon. Sorry, uh, I'll explain to you the mechanics of what normally happens in a wood gas stove. So, initially, when you light it, uh, you have flame, which is taking place on the actual fuel. So you have flames coming up off of the actual coals or the uh, wood. Sorry, the wood pellets or the sticks, whatever you put in there. So the flame is coming off of that. Uh, about two or three minutes into it. What you then have is air rushing up from these holes, um, going up through the wall of the stove, is going to start to pull from the bottom primary holes that you would see if you were looking straight down. So what that does then is it starts to suck the uh, smoke and the gases from the fuel uh, so that it rises up through the outside chamber and then you see them coming out through the secondary air holes and that's what gives you your secondary burn. Okay, so that's that's the function of the uh, wood gas stove. So you can see it, it just extinguished now. Uh, we're left with uh, just charcoal and there's a bit of smoke now. So, still fairly warm, uh, not nearly as hot as the first design, uh, but there you have it well over an hour of actual flame and uh, yeah it's uh, you know that's what you get when you change uh, the size of the primary air uh, to a lot less and allow a lot less wood gas you have a, a prolonged uh, burn time uh, like you saw here so I will definitely change that but I think what I'm ultimately going to do is make this into a variable design where I can uh, put a notch in here and increase or decrease the amount of airflow and wood gas mixture and uh, tune it to how how I need it for depending on what I'm doing whether I'm cooking or I'm trying to simmer something or I just wanna you know have something to warm my hands with whatever it is that I, I'm trying to accomplish but uh, that's that so I'm not gonna let this go until it goes down to ash because I don't think it's actually gonna go fully down to ash because there's really not enough uh, primary air coming in to, uh, to do that so I think in about five minutes or so you'll see uh, no more smoke and this thing will be officially done so that's it I'll uh, see you guys soon in another video and uh, hopefully demonstrating what a, uh, a variable airflow looks like in a wood gas stove thanks a lot guys